Hello everyone and welcome to part two. You may recall in the part one I set out the procedure for those asylum seekers who arrive in Ireland without passport or ID, which in fact is about 85% of those arriving. As we all know by now, this immigration crisis is just getting worse. We have approximately 560 asylum applicants arriving every week in Ireland. This is completely unsustainable and will lead to chaos if not stopped. This has come about as a result of the repeated failures of this government and in particular the Minister for Justice to apply the law under the Immigration Act for those who arrive without passport or ID and the Dublin 3 regulations for those who have already travelled through or landed in another EU member state. Now, notwithstanding any potential humanitarian consequences, which may apply, of course, for some, obviously, the point is that failure to apply the law has ensured that there is no deterrent. And this orchestrated human trafficking business, because that's what it is for the most part, both international and indeed national, a business model for those landlords and others with property utilised for asylum seekers who benefit financially from this continues, creating havoc for the Irish people and especially those in communities that have to endure the setting up of IPAS centres in their midst. The state talks about their legal obligations to have IPAS centres, but they are not following the law. In particular, the government are not applying the law under statutory instrument number 230 of 2018, where they have a legal obligation to take into account a number of factors, including public interest and public order. No risk assessments are being carried out in relation to the public interest and public order aspects. And as a consequence, it is generally working class communities and rural areas who bear the brunt of this enforcement policy. Now we have witnessed the state utilising public order units and in a brutal manner uh, to enforce these measures in Newtown Mount Kennedy in particular and also in Carrow in County Galway. The minister responsible for this policy is Roderick O'Gorman. One would have to ask the all-important question, which is how many of these asylum seekers were incentivised to come to Ireland as a result of the tweeting by this same minister in eight different languages, setting out our asylum policy and the prospect of own door accommodation within eight within four months. 85% of asylum seekers arriving at Dublin Airport do so without passport or ID. The next question which has to be asked is how many of them were incentivized to do so because this current Minister for Justice failed to implement the provisions of the Immigration Act to prosecute those who do arrive without passport or ID. At any other time in our history, these ministers would be sacked for incompetence. But no, not this government, who will desperately cling to power at any cost. Denmark, another EU country, is leading the way and has a very successful immigration policy and Ireland should follow their example if they genuinely want to resolve this crisis. Now, between January and April this year, Denmark had 747 asylum applications and Ireland had 6,500 in the exact same period. So now as to solutions, as I promised, there are five recommendations I would make as follows. One, strictly to enforce deportation orders. Two, to apply the Immigration Act of 2004 in respect of those arriving without passport or ID. Four, ensure applicability of the Dublin Three regulations in returning asylum seekers to their first country of entry. Four, rejection by this government and the Oireachtas of the new EU, EU Asylum and Migration Pact. And five, for this government to join forces with the other 15 and growing member states of the EU in seeking to have a Rwanda-style system or an externalised processing system to process those asylum seekers in a suitable third country. If this were to occur, we would not need to create IPAS centres in communities where they are not appropriate and all asylum applicants would receive their due process application requests handled in a manner that is consistent with human rights standards and the Geneva Conventions in another suitable third country location. 
I first spoke about these solutions in Newtown Mount Kennedy last Thursday when the Garda Siakana hovering helicopter mysteriously moved in very close when I was speaking. It seems they heard what I said because now Taoiseach Simon Harris has apparently stated the next day that they are open-minded on my proposal, although he never mentioned me, of course. There are no legal, good or justifiable reasons why this not, could not be done. This just shows what people power can achieve. Remember, there are more of us than there are of them. A wise man once said, when a people fear their government, there is tyranny. When a government fear their people, there is liberty. These solutions are what we should be demanding of all our elected representatives before our country descends into chaos. You know what to do next Friday, June the 7th. Show this government and all the main political parties how you feel about the manner in which they have governed our country. If you want me to continue to fight for you here in Ireland and in Europe, you know what to do next Friday, June the 7th. Vote number one for Una McGark. Until next time, blessings. Thank you for listening.